Have you come to any conclusion as to, to why some people get very sick and other people do not? There's, there's probably over 30 different genes that make you more or less susceptible to severe disease. So it's what we call polygenic. You know, it's not a simple one yeah. or two gene. It's a combination of all these different genes. Um, but the main determinant has been age and also things like obesity and social sure. deprivation. You know, all of those factors are very, very clear now. Um, and they're slightly different from the factors that cause severe illness in influenza, which we previously studied ex extensively. Yeah. Everyone has a, a unique uh, genome, but, uh, you know, family people, the members have similar, you know, with their uh, mm. variations. If one person doesn't get it, are the rest of them probably OK? There's, there's a lot of interesting work going on on trying to understand why it is that you can actually, say, share a bed with somebody who's got COVID and you don't get it. So, you know, what determines that um, that difference is, is so interesting. And it is, again, down to the innate immune system, largely. My father, he used to say that he never got sick because as a child, he used to swim in the canal and there'd be a sack with a dead dog in it, uh, you know, floating up beside him. And he figured his immune system was tough. Yeah. It didn't save yeah. him in the yeah. end, but at the yeah. same time, he always maintained he had a robust immune system. Yes. So we've been doing human challenge studies on volunteers. Um, How do you persuade people to allow themselves to be <laughs> infected by these? Well, it's surprising how keen people are to volunteer. I think there's a number of different motivations. We do pay them. Um, a lot of them, once they become involved in the study, are actually really interested in the science. They get, they get very interested in what it is that you're doing, why you're taking samples and what you're showing. And some of them actually are determined to do this because they know that animal research has its limits in terms of um, being able to tell you about human disease. And they're quite committed to supporting human research because it gives you unique insights that you just can't quite get from the animals. And in terms of those viruses that you have studied with human volunteers, what have you learned? Well, going back to what we were saying before, if we take a group of volunteers and we give them all the virus directly into the nose, usually about roughly half of them become infected. The other half don't. So this allows us to do what we call prospective studies, where you can take samples out of the nose, take blood samples, and you know, establish a pattern of responses which are associated with that protection. Because there may be someone who's infected in the nose and whose uh, immune system battles it in the nose it gets no further it gets no further others exactly. it might be further down where the battle occurs and yes. others will succumb in the lungs absolutely right i mean so what the vaccines do is stop it going down into the lungs but don't necessarily prime the nose in the way that allows defense at that first encounter mm. so what we need are these new vaccines which are mucosal vaccines which prime the lining of the nose and which stop the virus actually replicating and passing on to somebody else mm.